Malala Yousafzai, Warrior with Words, by Karen Leggett Abaraya, Collages by Susan L. Roth. Malala Yousafzai is a warrior with words, and Malala was a miracle in pink as she celebrated her 16th birthday. She did not have a sleepover. She celebrated by standing up for a cause. Malala was recovering from a serious injury. It was a miracle that she could stand at all, but she stood up in front of the whole world to prove that words have power. In July 2013, Malala spoke in front of hundreds of young people and world leaders gathered at the United Nations in New York. We will bring change through our voice, she said. She asked every nation to make it possible for all children to go to school and live in peace. Every country, all children, in peace. Our words can change the world, Malala said. Where did Malala learn that her voice and words could change the world? Malala was born in 1997 in the city of Mingora in the Swat Valley of Northern Pakistan. Her father named her after Malala of Maiwand, a brave woman whose poetry helped save her village from British invaders more than a hundred years ago. As a young girl, Malala had lots of books, and she also kept notebooks filled with her own thoughts and words. Malala's mother was a strong and determined supporter of her book-loving daughter. Malala calls the place where she grew up, My Swat. It was a land of fresh green valleys and shimmering snow-covered mountaintops where people came to vacation with their families. In 2007, when Malala was 10 years old, the Swat Valley became the center of a war between the Taliban and the government of Pakistan. Taliban leaders said girls should not go to school. Malala's father was the principal of her school for girls. He encouraged his daughter to tell the world about the difficult days under Taliban rule. So Malala wrote a blog. It first appeared in 2009 in both her native Urdu and in English on British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC websites. She used the name Gul Makai so that no one would know who was really writing the blog. I was getting ready for school, Malala wrote on her blog when I remembered that our principal had told us not to wear uniforms and come to school wearing normal clothes instead. So Malala dressed in her favorite color, pink, and other girls wore bright colors too. But when they arrived at school during the morning assembly, we were told not to wear colorful clothes as the Taliban would object to it, Malala wrote. The Taliban ordered everyone to obey even more strict rules. They said girls should not be educated and women should not work outside the homes. This was a scary time. Some people are afraid of ghosts, some of spiders or snakes. In those days, we were afraid of our fellow human beings, Malala later wrote. Many of Malala's friends were fearful. Some of them moved with their families to other villages or towns in Pakistan. Only 11 students still attended Malala's class that normally had 27 children. Just before winter vacation started on January 15, 2009, the Taliban announced that all schools for girls in the Swat Valley were closing and would not reopen. Malala's father wanted the family to stay in Mingora but gunfire kept everyone awake most nights. That spring, when Pakistan's army began fighting the Taliban, Malala and her family left the Swat Valley. Malala packed a school bag with a few books and papers and some clothes. Leaving the valley was harder than anything I had done before, Malala later wrote. I stood on our roof looking at the mountains, at the alleys where we used to play. I tried to memorize every detail in case I never saw my home again. Finally, Malala, her mother, and her brothers arrived in the village of Shangla. Malala's father had grown up in Shangla, and he still had relatives and friends there. The trip usually took a few hours by car, 
This time it took two days. An army officer almost stopped them. They had to walk the last 15 miles carrying all of their things. By summer, the fighting was over and Malala and her family returned to Mingora. The destruction made them weep. Their house was in chaos, but the books and notebooks in Malala's room had not been touched. Malala's father's school opened again, but many other schools had been destroyed. Malala was sad and angry. She began speaking out to everyone who would listen, and she did not hide her name anymore. Malala wanted to prove that peaceful words have power over violence. For her courage, Malala won Pakistan's first National Youth Peace Prize in 2011. During an interview about the prize for Pakistani television, Malala was asked if she was afraid. Malala said she could imagine being face to face with members of the Taliban. I will tell them that what they are trying to do is wrong, that education is our basic right. On October 9, 2012, when Malala was riding a bus home from school, a man from the Taliban climbed aboard. He shot Malala and two of her friends. Her friends were able to recover in Pakistan, but Malala had been hurt more seriously. She had been shot on the side of her head. Malala was treated first at two different hospitals in Pakistan. Then she was taken to a hospital in Birmingham, England that specializes in treating wounded soldiers. Malala's family and friends feared she might not live. Miraculously, Malala recovered with no injury to her brain. When she spoke at the United Nations in 2013, it was only nine months after the shooting. Nothing changed in my life except this. Weakness, fear, and hopelessness died, Malala declared. Strength, power, and courage were born. I am the same Malala. My ambitions are the same. My hopes are the same. My dreams are the same. After her recovery, Malala began attending school in England where she lived with her family. She continued to share her hopes and words. People around the world answered with rallies, prayer vigils, and marches, often singing, I am Malala. In October 2013, Malala and her father formed the Malala Fund. The fund works to give girls hope for an education and a better life. On the fund's website, it says, if one educated girl can change the world, imagine what 130 million girls could do. In 2014, at the age of 17, Malala became the youngest person to win the Nobel Peace Prize. She received the award along with Kailash Satyarthi. Satyarthi is from India. He has worked for many years to allow children to go to school instead of being forced to work. When she accepted the Nobel Prize, Malala said, this award is not just for me. It is for those forgotten children who want education. It is for those frightened children who want peace. It is for those voiceless children who want change. Before Malala began her studies at the University of Oxford in England in 2017, she traveled the globe on a journey she called her Girl Power Trip. She met girls everywhere who were being denied an education. She talked with world leaders and asked them to take action. When she returned, Malala continued to lead the fight for all children in every country to go to school in peace. She wants every girl and boy to stand up and speak out for the millions of children worldwide who are not yet able to attend school. Pink may no longer be her favorite color, but Malala Yousafzai is still a warrior with words. As she said at the United Nations in 2013, let us pick up our books and pens. One child, one teacher, one pen, and one book can change the world. Thank you.